Hello, this is John Cresswell. I'm speaking to you from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln in the United States. I am in the Department of Educational Psychology and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about what is mixed methods research. This will just be a short video presentation. I've been working in the field of mixed methods research for almost 25 years. I co-founded uh, the Journal of Mixed Methods Research. We've established a research office here. I've written textbooks on mixed methods research, and I've been teaching it for almost uh, 20 years now. So I'm just going to kind of run through some of the basic ideas of uh, four points about what mixed methods research is. Now, hopefully you'll find this informative and educational and learn a little bit about mixed methods research. The thing is, we might start with the broader question of what kind of evidence do we use to study the problems today in the social sciences, and education, and the health sciences. I think we can draw some clues from looking at recent documentaries. Take, for example, Al Gore's documentary, Inconvenient Truth. And this is a documentary, of course, about global warming. But when you look at this documentary, it's a mixed methods documentary because Al Gore combines both the stories as well as statistical trends. For example, he shows some pictures of how the glaciers have changed over time and talks about that story of change over the years. And then in the next slide, he's, he's showing us some, some graphs, some pictures of how these changes have occurred. We can find it also in the sporting world today when we look at the evidence. For example, there is this well-known basketball player in the United States, Shane Battier. He was a, in, as, a seventh, as a seventh grader, the fourth best in the nation. He graduated uh, from high school. He was considered the best. He went on to a very illustrious college career. Now, when he went into the professional basketball realm and people began looking at his statistics, on how he performed, he didn't score many points, he didn't really snag many rebounds, he stole a few balls, he really dished out few assists, but yet his team was winning. But then, when they started bringing in qualitative information, such as looking at how he blocked the opponent's vision, how he looked at whether the players drove left or right, whether he talked to teammates and how he talked to teammates, we get the qualitative evidence that begins to supplement or augment the statistical evidence to have a, a greater understanding of Shane's potential. We see this too in everyday events that are portrayed in the media, such as the stories about Hurricane Sandy in New York City, where we get the, the passionate, uh, tragic stories of individuals who've lost property and some have lost lives. And those are then presented alongside the uh, newscasters that show the statistics about Hurricane Sandy and give us the numeric information. So again, we have stories and numbers being portrayed in the media. This leads to mixed methods research, which in the simplest way of thinking about it is just simply putting together the stories of people's lives as well as the, the numbers, the statistics of what occurs. It's an emerging mixed methods uh, approach in the social and health sciences. It combines both these statistical trends and the stories. People have developed a complete methodology around this concept. The whole idea is that combining both statistics as well as the stories gives us a more complete understanding of our research problem than just one by itself. So I want to go through now four key features that really illustrate to me what mixed methods is all about. First of all, it's collecting and analyzing both qualitative and quantitative data using rigorous approaches in collecting those methods, combining the two forms of data, and then perhaps framing it within a broader framework. And what I'm going to do now is take each one of these four points and I'm going to break them down and talk about them specifically. It's helpful, too, at the beginning to think about what mixed methods is not, because there's a lot of uh, commentary out there about what mixed methods is, what it is not. 
here's some of my thoughts about what it's not. It's, it's not simply just using the name mixed methods without the more rigorous procedure. In research methodology, people do that. They drop in the terms such as grounded theory, but they really don't have the rigorous procedures behind it. It's more than just having both quantitative and qualitative data available. And it's also more than just gathering both forms of data and analyzing them separately without bringing them together. Also, it's not just gathering multiple forms of qualitative data or multiple forms of quantitative data. There's a term for that in the literature called multi-method research. So now let me go through these four points. First of all, what does it mean to collect and analyze both qualitative and quantitative data? We need to view data as part of a larger picture of doing research. It's the type of information we gather and analyze to answer our questions. It's then framed within larger questions and framed within larger philosophical assumptions of doing research. So my focus is going to be on how we treat that data, how we combine it and integrate it in mixed methods research. But we need to rec recognize it as part of a larger approach to doing research. It's just one step in the process. Now, when you gather quantitative data and qualitative data, there are certain different assumptions that are operating. Two different forms of gathering evidence. Quantitative data is usually predetermined by the researcher. It's based on instruments. We gather those instruments measuring performance, attitudes, observations. We then do statistical analysis and we make an interpretation. Qualitative has a different type of methods going on. It's an emerging methods where we don't necessarily start with a predetermined instrument. We ask very open-ended questions. We often conduct interviews, observations. We look at documents. We might look at email messages. We might listen to sounds. The array of qualitative methods uh, that are collected, data that's collected is very broad. Then we take that information and we analyze it. I say we analyze text or image data. And we build up a picture of what themes or patterns emerge from talking to people. So I see the methods for quantitative and qualitative being very different and having distinct features. Now, now both methods have advantages. Take quantitative research, for example. It's really useful for studying large numbers of people across a wide geographic area. It's a very efficient method of data collection. We can start looking at the relationship among concepts or variables. We can even act, look at whether something causes something, cause and effect. Uh, we can control for bias carefully. You know, and people tend to like numbers. But we also know there's a downside to quantitative research. It tends to be impersonal, dry. We really don't hear the words of participants. Often we don't go out to the actual setting where things are occurring. It's largely driven by the research. Now qualitative research has some distinct advantages too. We can hear those detailed voices of people. We can understand their experiences and their actual settings where things are occurring. Your whole idea in qualitative is to build the perspective up from the views of participants not from the researcher's perspective. So it's more realistic. And people like stories. Some of its limitations. Well, it's, it often draws on small samples, so we can't really apply it across a large number of people. Uh, it's also highly interpretive. Uh, and it also relies on the researcher's interpretation to make sense of these stories that individuals provide. So mixed methods, secondly, is rigorous. Well, what, what constitutes a rigorous quantitative study and a rigorous qualitative study? We need to attend to different perspectives about design, such as uh, using a design procedure. In quantitative, this would mean an experiment or correlation or survey, whereas in qualitative, it might mean using a design such as an ethnography, a grounded theory, phenomenological study. We also need to attend to how we collect the data from sites, permissions, 
a systematic or a purposeful sampling, uh, an adequate N uh, or number of people that we study. We need to have multiple forms of data collection. We need to go through a rigorous procedure of analysis of the information, whether it's a statistical analysis, such as descriptive, inferential, using statistical packages, or on the qualitative side, whether it's using a software, qualitative software package, and then building from the codes to the themes to the, to the larger perspectives. So we need some rigorous methods when we do mixed methods research. That gives it more of a scientific uh, form. Third, and this is maybe one of the most important and one of the most confusing parts of mixed methods research, we need to integrate these two forms of data. We need to bring the qualitative and the quantitative together. Now, there are some designs out there in the mixed methods field that have emerged, and these have developed over maybe the last 20 years. The first one we call a convergent design. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to collect quantitative data, analyze it, and at the same time, we're going to collect qualitative data and analyze it. So the quantitative might be a survey. The qualitative might be a, a, an open-ended interview with some people. We're going to gather these two databases, and then we're actually going to merge the data, bring it together. And basically, we're going to compare the results to see when we ask people questions and talk to them, as in qualitative, and we gather information on instruments, whether the results from these two databases uh, merge and are, are comparable. That's a convergent design. The next is an explanatory sequential design. It's a very popular one in the social sciences and health sciences. We're going to start by collecting quantitative data, analyzing it, and then from those results, we're then going to build in a, a second qualitative phase where we follow up. So the whole idea in, in this design is to interpret the quantitative results using the qualitative data. Now we can reverse this and we have an exploratory design where we're going to start not quantitatively, but we're going to start qualitatively. So we start with the qualitative data collection. We explore and come up with findings. We then use those findings to then follow up with a quantitative phase. For example, we might use qualitative findings to develop a new instrument because there aren't existing instruments out there to measure the, a certain uh, phenomenon with a population. So this is a good design for that. So I call it qualitative exploration, then leading to a quantitative test. Now, there's one more step. We can move beyond these three basic designs to more what we call advanced designs. So within a basic design, we can add to it. Think about a basic design that we're then going to surround it with a more advanced design. We're going to put some more features into it. For example, we might do an experiment within which a convergent design is used. We might do a case study. We might use a theoretical model, a social change model, for example. Or we might use a social science theory model. One of the popular approaches here is to do an experiment. And within that, to use a convergent basic design where we gather both quantitative and qualitative data and bring them together. Another one would be to use a social science theory that surrounds an explanatory sequential design. So the theory that kind of guides the entire study, it provides a framework for which we then start quantitatively and follow up qualitatively. Another popular one that's emerging is, is a community-based participatory research. That's a framework for engaging the community and getting them involved in decisions throughout the research process. We might use that in an exploratory sequential design. So those are four of the basic ideas of what mixed methods research is. It's collecting and analyzing qualitative and quantitative data, using rigorous procedures, combining or integrating both forms of data, and then framing, often framing uh, these designs within a larger perspective, such as an experiment, a theory, or a community participatory research approach. Thanks for your time. We look forward to hearing more about mixed methods from you in the future.